This was the best video I ever made, but when I originally recorded it in 2023, I talked way too slow. So now you can watch it set to 1.25 speed by default. Hope you enjoy, and remember, a good writer can make anything seem interesting. Outside of this channel, I am a massive basketball fan. My favorite team is the Denver Nuggets, but if you followed mainstream NBA coverage, you would barely know they exist, even though they've been one of the NBA's best teams all season. One of the reasons given for this lack of coverage, according to journalists like Sports Illustrated's Chris Mannix, is that the Denver Nuggets are not an interesting team. That's ridiculous. It is not the job of the subject to give you the story. It is your job as a writer to find the story in the subject. Everything has a story, but especially people, and even more especially, groups of them. Any story is interesting if you're a good enough writer to present it well. But you wouldn't know that if you only followed mainstream NBA coverage. All you get there is LeBron slop and rage bait takes. The Nuggets made the Western Conference Finals in the most uncomfortable playoff environment in league history after being the only team to come back from two 1-3 deficits in the same playoff run, then lost two seasons of title contention due to their second and third best players being injured, and are now at the top of the NBA mountain with a 42nd overall pick as their best player, and that's just scratching the surface. For a major sports writer to call that an uninteresting team is disgusting. So that's why this video exists, to prove that I can write about fake monsters better than most of these glorified NBA gossip columnists can write about real people. I'll be taking a very boring Pokemon and showing you why it's actually very interesting. Now yes, it would be much easier for me to make a slop video on why Charizard is not the GOAT or Mewtwo's latest trade request, but I don't hate myself enough to do that. Now, finding a subject for this video wasn't easy, unlike it would be for Chris Mannix, who just had to look at the top of the Western Conference all year and think, I should see what's going on with the number one seed. In my case, I've got over a thousand Pokémon to consider, and defining boring isn't exactly a stone-cold science. When I asked my followers on Twitter and subscribers on YouTube, I was met with answers like Carnivine and Unknown. Competitively worthless Pokémon, yes but they have too many notable appearances in other Pokémon media to consider them boring by my standards. Then there's Lumineon, who actually rose into relevancy after people kept calling it the most forgotten Pokémon. I wanted a Pokémon who had the perfect combination of competitive irrelevancy and little fanfare. One of my followers helped me find exactly that with Spydops. Visually, it's not great at first glance. It looks like a mid-game swarm enemy from a bad PS1 game nobody remembers. It reminds me of Drapion, whose design was panned for years because it looks like a bunch of circles just smushed together. With Spydops, it looks like they jabbed sticks into a rectangle and called it a day. But we shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Dare we emulate the NBA media, who for years cast off Nugget star Nikola Jokic as just a fat European. We're going to treat this weird-looking Pokémon with respect, and actually see what it has to offer. Let's start by giving its design a second chance. The green on its chest can be seen as resembling a protective vest worn by special forces, while the deep black around its eyes looks similar to night vision goggles. In its shiny form, its web turns a bright red, as if being modeled after infrared lasers. Its scarlet Pokedex entry talks about it being a silent assassin, taking out prey before they realize they're in danger. The motif matches its name, Spy Dops, Spy Ops. But of course, there's also an animal inspiration in this Pokémon, coming from the spider species Dianopidae, stick-like spiders that utilize night vision to cast their webs in low-light environments much more effectively than other spiders. A subcategory of this family are ogre-faced spiders, which is where we see the inspiration for Spidops pressing its extremities together in pairs. In keeping with ogres, it's also possible that Spidops' design took inspiration from a race of trap-setting demon spiders in Japanese folklore known as Suchigomo, who were said to have the faces of ogres and the bodies of spiders. So yeah, this Pokémon I thought looked boring a few minutes ago actually has some varied inspirations that it shows off really well. All it took to figure that out was asking and digging. What's stopping paid national sports writers from doing that with Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets as a whole? Asking why they're doing so well, and then actually watching the games to figure it out. Spydops' base stat total of 404 is the lowest of any fully evolved Pokémon introduced in Generation 9 but what it lacks in stats, it doesn't make up for elsewhere. In Smogon's tiering system, it doesn't do much of anything, and there's little hope that it will ever be relevant in VGC. But when you look at its move pool, there was clearly effort taken to give it a role. 
Spydops is the only Pokémon that can learn both Spikes and Sticky Web, two very useful entry hazards, and it's got access to a variety of moves that help it elsewhere. This includes its signature move Silk Trap, a variation of Protect that lowers the opponent's speed if they use a contact move against it. Silk Trap is the fifth variation of Protect to have a secondary effect on contact. The trend began in Generation 6, with Chestnut's Spiky Shield and Aegislash's King Shield, and we've received a new one in each generation since. Spydops' move pool seems perfect for being a bulky supportive annoyance, with healing moves like Leech Life and priority moves like First Impression and Sucker Punch to bypass its bad speed. Its abilities are also very helpful, whether it's being immune to the sleep status with Insomnia or punishing switch-ins with Stakeout. The only competitive fault with this Pokémon is its stats. They are built to do nothing. While it's got good defenses, its HP and physical attack hold it back from being a quality mid-tier support Pokémon, and instead leave it as a Pokémon that can neither take hits nor dish them out. Instead of 60 HP and 79 attack, having 95 HP and 99 attack would give it some staying power to go along with its unique combination of support moves. We've actually never seen what a bulky, monotype bug Pokémon could do in competitive. Spydops is one of only six fully evolved bug Pokémon without a secondary typing, and that number drops to just three when only including Pokémon with pre-evolved forms. This is despite bug being the sixth most common type. And while you wouldn't necessarily think defense when it comes to bug types, they do resist two of the most common offensive types, ground and fighting. I can't think of another Pokémon that has been held back in competitive play exclusively because of its stats. Spydops has everything else needed to be pretty solid, so it's really weird how they handled this part. Being so new to the series, Spydops has yet to make any anime or manga appearances, though it already has three cards, including an EX card and a Black Star promo. Bug Pokémon Black Star promo cards are surprisingly rare across the sets. In the first run of Black Star promos, Scissor was the only bug type that got a card, and the next two rounds of Black Star promos didn't have any bug Pokémon. EX cards of bug Pokémon are equally uncommon across the years, with Scissor and Genesect making up the vast majority of them. Genesect was the newest bug Pokémon to have an EX card until Spydops, despite the cards always being part of new expansions and there being multiple very popular bug Pokémon in the following generations. The illustrations for Spydops' EX cards were done by two illustrators. The more common versions were done by Takuyao, who joined the TCG during Fusion Strike. The special print of the EX card had its illustration done by Miki Tanaka, who's been doing card art for Pokémon since the 1997 Fossil expansion. Spydops was the first bug Pokémon Tanaka did art for since Dark Explorer's Joltik all the way back in 2011. The TCG seems to have a lot of faith that Spydops will grow in popularity, giving it two distinctive card variations that other bug Pokémon could only dream of, even fan favorites like Vivillion and Volcarona. Now, was it a bit tedious to look through every EX card and every Black Star promo card to find all of the bug types? Yeah, kinda. But there are also notable parts of Pokémon's TCG history, and it was fascinating to see how little bug Pokémon get to be part of them. Another noteworthy aspect of Spydops is that it's one of the few non-legendary Pokémon to have a rivalry with another Pokémon. We first saw non-legendary rivals in Gen 3 with Saviper and Zangoose, and then again in Gen 5 with Heatmore and Durant. Uh, wrong Durant, I've heard enough about that one. Moving on, with Spydops, we get our first instance of a rivalry between Pokémon of different generations. Spydops feuds with Scyther, who's been with Pokémon since the first generation and is still one of the most popular bug types. This is only the second instance of rival Pokémon having different base stat totals, and it's also the largest gap. Mew and Mewtwo have an 80-point difference, while Spydops and Scyther have a 96-point difference, meaning Spydops is really punching above its weight here. There, I just spoke for 8 minutes on a Pokémon that I thought looked boring as sin upon first glance. Those eight minutes are actually more than some NBA reporters have admitted to watching the Denver Nuggets all season. Nothing is boring if you go into it thinking you can find interest in it. It's all about perspective, and as a writer, your job is to craft the viewer's perspective. If there isn't already a narrative, you have all the control to create one. Before I made this video, I didn't know Spydops was a Pokémon. My only experience with Generation 9 Pokémon are the ones that are top tier on Smogon. But since I wanted to create a narrative around it, I found one, because that's what writers do. You find stories in everything. 
I made SpyDops seem interesting for free. If you are a paid NBA writer who can't find something to write about the Denver Nuggets, you should be fired honestly. You could put me on the beat for the NBA's worst G League team, and I could find something interesting to write about. But so much of NBA media nowadays is tabloid bullshit. Like, oh, is LeBron gonna retire? Of course he's fucking not, and that was obvious from the moment he brought it up. Now cover the team that just swept his ass to make their first NBA Finals in franchise history. If you enjoyed this video, I've made similar Spotlight videos for other Pokemon, along with Spotlight episodes on indie and handheld fighting games. I also do a series called Diaries of a Beginner, where I attempt to learn Guilty Gear Plus R from scratch. I wanted to believe that I could learn how to get good at fighting games if I went about it the right way, that these games weren't some uncrackable code. Turns out, they're not. And if you'd like to see my journey from zero to solid, you can check out the playlist on the right. Writing is a beautiful thing, and you can craft stories around anything. I hope this video has proven as much.